Hi there. In this video I'll be replacing the exhaust thermostat on a Hotpoint TDL30 tumble dryer. The venting system on this model is quite common and therefore this video could be helpful on a number of other makes and models. Before you do any work on a domestic appliance, disconnect it from the mains power supply first. The first thing you'll need to do is remove the top and it's held on by two screws at the back while the front edge hooks into the cabinet. Even with the screws out they can sometimes still be troublesome. The next part to come off is the fascia panel, but first you'll need to remove the timer knob. And to prevent scratching it, drape an old towel over the front of the machine and grip the knob with a pair of pliers. This way it will come off relatively easily. The fascia also has two screws holding it on. And when removed the panel can be slid to the right and unhooked from the bracket which holds the other end onto the cabinet. If you have switches on your panel, then note where the wires came from. If it's just one switch, then it's not a problem. But if there are more, you'll need to know which switch they came off for refitting. Open the door and remove the two screws holding the door switch on. In most cases it will stay put because it's usually connected to the front or side panels by a piece of steel wire or a cable tie. So watch out for this when you take the front panel off. The kick plates on these machines are just hooked in and they come off quite easily if you grip either side and give a little tug. This will give you access to the screws at the base of the front plate. In this case there are three screws but other models could have more or less. Remove the lower screws first before you undo the ones on the top of the panel. Although it shouldn't move because the drums resting on the ducting attached to it but it's good policy to always undo the bottom screws before the top ones, just in case the panel does fall. You should now be able to ease the panel away from the cabinet, but don't pull it too violently because as I said earlier, the switch may still be attached to it via a tie clip or a wire. The drum will drop a little, but that's natural. The rear bearing will stop it from falling out. The exhaust thermostat is on the front ducting and you will have to be careful not to pull the panel too far away from the cabinet while it's still attached to the machine. Before you just replace the stat, do a continuity test on it first. It only takes a second and you'll know for sure if it's that which is faulty or not. These thermostats usually come with a foam washer, but just in case your one doesn't, be careful how you remove the old one. There are a number of different thermostats for these machines which basically look the same but each have a different temperature setting depending on their location and the job they're intended for. So you do need to make sure you have the correct one not only for your machine but also for its location. You can quite easily over tighten these screws and strip the thread so be aware of this and just do them up hand tight. Before you reconnect the wires to the thermostat, first remove the plastic internal ducting tube, if you haven't already done so, because this will be refitted from the back. It doesn't matter which terminals the wires fit onto because there are only two, so reconnect them to the stat and you can refit the front panel. Hook the lower edge of the panel onto the front of the cabinet and it will rest there while you fit the switch. There's a lip on the front edge of the switch and it hooks into the opening on the panel. This has to be inserted first or the switch won't fit properly. Don't forget to tie the cables back with a wire or tie clip, or they could rub on the drum as it rotates and short out. Replace the screws in the switch and recite the front panel. You'll need to lift the drum as you push the panel back against the cabinet, so it will rest on the front bearing pad on the ducting. Once you have the front on level, replace the top screws. Then make sure the holes on the bottom of the panel line up and replace those as well before reattaching the kick plate. If you have more than one switch then make sure you connect the correct wires to each one. Hook the lip on the panel into the bracket on the cabinet and replace the screws. Be careful you don't drop any of them or you could have a job retrieving them. 
For awkwardly placed screws like these, a magnetic tip screwdriver can save you so much time. The control knob, as you can see, will only fit on in one position. Replace the top and refit the screws. Stay at the back of the machine and undo the two screws on the retaining collar around the vent opening, then remove it. Now slide the vent pipe into the cabinet. It's a lot easier to get it to locate onto the lip of the front ducting if you put your arm in the tube and feel for it, rather than just trying to fit it visually. Unless it's on correctly, the retaining collar won't fit back properly. Replace the collar and screws and the job's done. On behalf of Selfix UK, we'd like to thank you for watching this video and hope you found it interesting. Goodbye.